Hi guys, and welcome to episode seven of the Freddy Dynamite Cafe Racer build. First, I'm gonna apologize for the long delay from the last video, that was quite a few months ago now. But honestly, I had no idea how much work these things were gonna be and how much time they were gonna take, and that got a little burnt out. But now I'm back on it, excited to get this thing built. But on that note, listen guys, all these YouTubers that you guys watch and you enjoy and you not necessarily me, me of course, but other YouTubers you like and enjoy, just take a second to hit like and subscribe to them. It really motivates us to, to create more content for you guys. It makes us feel like somebody's actually watching. And it just takes literally a second. Click, click, that's it. So what have I been doing since last video? Let's see. I got hit by a car on my CBR 600 and have been working on that to get that fixed. Uh, I got myself a KLR650 to do some adventure riding in the summer. I really enjoyed that. And I got some more gear, I got some more tools, got some more lights. Just basically stockpiling the garage full of fun stuff to play with. But now let's get back to building this bike. And in today's episode, we're putting in the electronics tray and the battery box. And that should just be about everything we need to do to modify the frame. And then we can start rebuilding stuff and getting it back together. So let's get this bike and this project moving again. Cue the intro. All right, here we go. So in previous episodes, we welded in the rear seat hoop. That's all done. Now that leaves this big hole here. Now we've got to build the electronics tray to hold everything, the regulator, all the relays, the fuse box, and of course the battery. The battery will be out back here covered up by the seat cowl that we'll make in another episode. So today we're going to weld in some cross braces here to some square tube to give somewhere to mount the trays to and give it a bit more strength. And then we're going to fabricate the electronics tray here and a plate at the back for the battery to hold on to. So we're going to start with this one inch square tube that will fish mouth the ends. Put one here and put one there. That will give us our mounts to hold the, back, the electronics tray and also a place at the back here for the battery shelf to sit. Alright, now that we got these two little parts made, they're going to go right in here. I'm going to put one in the back for now. I'm not sure about putting one in the front yet. I might, because it may be a good place for seat support also, or I might just make the tray go up to there. We'll start off by putting the one in the back first. That's a nice tight fit. So from here, we're going to have a piece of metal back here where the battery's going to stay, about there, 
and then the tray itself will drop in between the frame rails here to the front. All right, let's get that welded in. Now working on the front cross brace, I've drilled three holes in here and I have little rubber grommets to put in there and these will be the places where the main wires go through for the rest of the bike. All right, we've got our two cross braces in. Again, I'm a horrible welder, but I'm a great grinder. So now, what's next? We've got to make a plate back here for the battery to hold in. Got a plate under here to hold the electronics tray. And we're gonna add another plate up here, a small one, that's gonna hold the regulator. More on that in just a second. Now that we have our cross braces welded in, which also serve as a support for our electronics tray, we're going to take the metal and make the bottom of the tray where all the electronics will mount to inside. First I was going to make a box like most YouTube videos do, but I realized with mine, with these flat cross braces, I might not need it. I think I'm just going to make a piece that sits across these two braces and welds along the bottom of the tubes. That makes it a lot easier without having to do any bends. So I'm going to get some bristle board cardboard and cut out a template and transfer that onto some metal. Nice and easy.
All right, so we've got the electronics tray installed. You might be wondering why I made it so shallow. A lot of people let it drop down below the frame. I want the bottom of my frame to be super smooth and nothing hanging down from it. Plus, when I was designing this, I looked at the components that I have to put into here, and they're all quite small. I've got the NWT Marty controller. It's going to fit in here. And, and the CDI unit, which also fits here. Both are less than an inch high. So it's perfectly smooth along top. And if I do need to put something bigger, I'd rather bump up my seat pan to cover them than have it hang down lower. I just want to take a minute here to talk about NWT. They're the company that produced the Marty system that I bought last year for this bike. This controller is going to take care of all the electronics on the bike in a small compact way since they only need ground signals come back to this box as triggers for it. At the same time, I bought their handlebar controllers three push buttons on each one that tie into this and make your life a whole lot easier. Now lately I've heard that they've partnered up with BJ from Brickhouse Builds, also an excellent channel. Go check him out, he builds some incredible stuff, and really nice guy. But they've partnered up with him to sell their product and they're expanding their product line. Before they used to only make the controllers and some switches, now they're getting into lithium batteries, updated regulators to be able to handle the lithium batteries, starter solenoids, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff that I don't know about yet but I'm sure it's going to be great. The good thing about this company, they've really gone above and beyond. Last week I hit them up to get a wiring diagram for the bike. I just sent them the components that I had and within a couple days they sent me out a complete wiring diagram for my whole bike. That makes my life so much easier. I know this kind of sounds like a commercial, but it's not. I'm paying for all my parts I'm getting from them. I just want to give kudos to a company that really is going above and beyond. They're really here to help bike builders like us with the hard stuff that you don't want to waste your time on so you can get back to actually building the bike that you want to build. So go check them out. Go check out NWT to see what they're offering and check out Brickhouse Builds where you can place your orders for their parts. I'll leave the links in the description down below. So next up is putting the panel back here that's going to hold the battery. Most people would put it underneath the frame but I'm going to put it on top because I have an idea of what I want to do with the taillight. I don't want to bring it up right now in case I can't pull it off. But if I can, it'll be really cool. Worst case scenario, if I do need to lower it, I can take this panel off and I'll mount it underneath. But I'm pretty sure I've got enough room. What I did was took the measurements of the NWT battery that I'm getting, and I made it out of foam blocks just while I'm waiting for the order to come in, so I can see how much room I have to play with. Putting it on top, as well as starter solenoid, I still have plenty of room underneath the cowl that I want to make the back. So now we're going to do the same thing we did with the tray. Just going to use some cardboard to create my template, cut it out, and we'll weld it in here too. There you go, another part done. We got our rear panel in, which is where the battery's going to go. But like this. And also our starter solenoid. 
And as you can see with my little mock-up of the rear cowl, will be well covered. Then our electronics tray with our NWT Marty system, our CDI. Now the only thing left, electronic-wise, is going to be the new regulator we're going to get. Again, I made a little mock-up out of foam. And according to the instructions, it is supposed to be mounted always the way they want it is straight up. They don't suggest mounting it upside down or even to the side, but straight up and down for cooling to keep the heat going up and out of it instead of feeding back into itself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it upwards, but I'm going to put it up in this spot here. I'm going to make a couple tabs that come from under this cross brace and to hold it up like that. It's not going to be ideal because still we're going to have the seat over it, but at least it'll be upright and we should get a lot of airflow going through here and around it. And with only two tabs underneath it, the underneath will be well cooled too. So it's going to be very simple, just two tabs that stick up from the frame with holes to bolt it in. And we'll finally be done. Well guys, that's it for episode 7 of the Freddy Dynamite Cafe Racer Built. We got the electronics tray in, the battery shelf, and the tab to hold the regulator. Sure feels good to finally make some progress again. Well, I promise it won't be as long till the next episode as it was for this one. In the next episode, we're going to do something, I'm not sure what, but it'll be something. Remember please click like, click subscribe, and... We'll see you in the next episode. See ya.